We are beginning with breaking news in the race for the White House. We have just learned new information about Donald Trump now working with ousted Fox News CEO Roger Ailes to assist with his debate preparation. CNN senior media reporter Dylan Byers is joining us now live with more on this development. And what do you know, Dylan, about what the role that, uh, that Ailes will play? Sure, Brianna, what we know is that Roger Ailes, who was ousted from Fox News amid sexual harassment allegations, is now talking with Donald Trump. Uh, the two have been in discussions. The two talk frequently. And, of course, the great uh, thing on the horizon for Donald Trump and his campaign is, of course, those three presidential debates, which are going to take place in September and October. If we, you know Roger Ailes, Roger Ailes is someone who uh, has advised presidential uh, candidates in their debates, going back to Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, the first George H.W. Bush. Uh, and so, of course, this is something in which he, he brings a great deal of expertise. The two of them talk frequently, have talked frequently since even before Roger Ailes left Fox News. And so, of course, what they are discussing is debate prep. Now, I want to be very clear. Formal debate prep has not started for Donald Trump. And the Trump campaign issued uh, a very forceful denial of this report, which originally appeared in The New York Times. That denial, if I can just read it to you now. This is not accurate. He is not advising Mr. Trump or helping with debate prep. They are longtime friends, but he has no formal or informal role in the campaign. I think what we can say confidently is that there's a sort of gray matter there where the two are talking. They are discussing the upcoming debates. And I do think Mr. Trump, based off the sources we've spoken with, finds Mr. Ailes' uh, advice on that front to be invaluable. But how does that square, if they're saying there's no formal or informal, how does that square with the facts that we know that the New York Times was first to report. Right. Well, it, it, it almost seems like too much of a full-throated denial based on right, both the New York Times reporting and, and on our own reporting. Uh, there's no denial there, too, that the two of them do talk regularly and that the two of them are indeed close friends. Again, this is Roger Ailes bread, or sorry, this is Roger Ailes bread and butter. This is what he does. He is a master of messaging. He is credited with some of the most famous lines coming out of some of the great presidential debates for the, for the various presidential candidates and presidents that he worked for. Uh, if, when, when the two of them get together and talk, there's no question that the debates are on the horizon. The debates are seen, especially for Mr. Trump, as, as the one area that he has left to truly salvage a campaign. And we've seen those poll numbers. He's slagging in those poll numbers. Those are his last sort of moments on the national stage by which to sort of advance his campaign and once again make his case to the nation that he's fit to be president of the United States. Real quick before I let you go, Dylan, are you getting the sense from people who are close to Donald Trump or backing Donald Trump that there's some discord about whether this is a good idea? Well, sure. I, discord in the Donald Trump campaign is sort of the name of the game. There's a lot of disagreement about how he should handle these things. Certainly, Donald Trump is someone who's always sort of flown off the cuff and done things his own way. But that doesn't mean there aren't certain people who he trusts and certain people whose advice that he takes seriously. And, and one of those people certainly is Roger Ailes. Again, no one knows this better than, than he does. So, and, and look, Roger Ailes, whatever you want to say about his tenure at Fox News, his tenure in terms of advising the media strategies of previous presidents and presidential candidates, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's a very solid and impressive record, at least in terms of the wins and the gains that he's made. So, look, I think on the whole, I think there's a lot of agreement that this is probably going to help Donald Trump. And certainly there are a lot of people in the Trump campaign who believe that Donald Trump needs to sort of sharpen his message and get a little bit more serious, start running more of a general election campaign as opposed to the sort of primary season campaign that he still seems to be running. Dylan Byers, thank you so much.